Hi, and welcome once again to BOMA International's Deeper Dive video presentation. I'm John Celestri, and the topic today is the outlook for medical office buildings. This, of course, is a companion piece to our uh, feature coverage on the medical office market, and you can access that at boma.org slash deep dive. Joining us today are two key players in the market whose firms contributed heavily to the creation of that feature. Uh, BOMA Chair Mark Dukes is a BOMA Fellow and Vice President of Asset Management for Physicians Realty in Atlanta. And Jay Neely is Senior Managing Director of Healthcare Capital Markets for Newmark in New York City. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. What do you see as the 2021 headline for medical office? This has been an exciting year on medical office for the past year and a half. The, the pandemic has uh, made the asset type really uh, of interest to not only the existing investors that have always been in the space, but a lot of new investors. So in terms of a headline, you know, something along the lines of the MOB sector becomes a priority asset class for new and existing investors in medical, in medical office. Mark, from the management perspective, what are you seeing? Our, our teams have done a really great job of partnering with our health systems and providers on just keeping people safe and communicating well and doing all that we can to do our part to be good partners on the operations side of the business. But, you know, it's tough. It's tough when we still are having situations and in in this later, latest activity with the Delta variant. Um, but, yeah, the the headline is we're still in this. Um, we still have to be very diligent in making sure that um, we're doing everything that we need to do, um, do our part, but also um, be supportive, be a good partner, uh, communicate well, protect people and property. So, so it's way too simplistic and not at all plugged in to say or assume that 2020 was business as usual simply because everybody always needs health care. Yeah, I think so. I'll, I'll take that one. Um, you know, I think when, when we have situations, when, well, first of all, we never have lived through a situation quite like this. Um, but in other times when we've had maybe economic downturns, it seems that healthcare and industrial, there's, there's other property types that, that seem to be more resilient. And, and, and honestly, John, we did not have a, a long period of, of shutdown. Um, you know, at first when we had um, any practices that weren't able to, to actively see patients and, and keep the volumes that they typically had, um, first and foremost, anything elective was deferred. And then secondly, what people don't quite understand, I don't believe is um, some of our providers really had a hard time with getting PPE where it needed to be. But, but really after probably mid-June of last year, it was business as usual from a open and available to see patients at the levels that they wanted to. Certainly they didn't have the volumes. Um, I think for the most part, uh, most of our clients would say they've come out of that. And now, um, unfortunately with this latest surge, they're, they're back to the, the days of all hands on deck and right. really long hours and, and um, just trying to approach this sort of next wave. In terms of everyone needs healthcare has, has always been one of the drivers underlying the asset class and the interest by investors in this asset class. It, it creates, it's one of the drivers that creates that recession resistance that investors enjoy in this asset class relative to other asset classes like traditional office, which the drivers are economic activity. Um, you know, there's always been the, the tailwinds driving the healthcare sector, like the demographic trends and the aging population. That has always existed and continues to exist. You know, what this pandemic has shown us is that even in a recession that was squarely pointed at our sector, the asset class performed and investors took note of that. Uh, we saw a lot of new investors entering the space, some of those from outside and investors typically of traditional office now are looking at medical office as a bit of a safe haven, income security where they can invest. They understand that it's, it's a different sector, but perhaps their experience within the office sector, they have familiarity with the asset type, not necessarily the drivers of it. Um, so we're seeing what we saw in 2020 and continuing to 2021, 
a lot of new investors coming into the space and the existing investors all remained. Um, we had a lot of dollars chasing a limited amount of product um, and that has product has really increased over time. There's a, a lot of portfolio activity in the market and you're seeing transaction volumes really increasing as the year has gone on. So a slower start to the year in terms of transaction volume, but that's really surging as we enter the third quarter and the fourth quarter we expect to really be an exceedingly uh, high transaction volume quarter. So it's, a, it's an important point. It's not the only driver, but that, but that driver is really an important one that everyone has uh, acknowledges as a, a good entry point and a reason to enter. But there's many other drivers that I think are surround that that really make this an excellent asset class for investment. Excellent. Thank, thank you very much. Um, one of the sub themes throughout this crazy year and a half that we've been through is that there were a lot of trends that weren't started with the downturn and, and COVID, but rather were accelerated by COVID. Uh, one of the things that I think of is the acceleration of uh, more accessible healthcare locations closer to, to the people. What other trends, either in management or investment, are starting were accelerated? last year, Mark? I think we've always been focused on doing our part to keep people safe. But, you know, I've said that twice now, I think, already. Um, that's a, that's a, um, a primary reason. Um, we, we are here for the patient experience and both convenience uh, and, and safety and, and sanitation and all those things are very, very important. We definitely have taken a lot of our practices to, to new levels. Um, I don't think that will change. I think the fact that we have a higher frequency of addressing common areas and um, you know more availability of things like hand sanitizer and, and adoption of new technologies, all the technologies we can come up with for hands-free um, are here to stay and, and only going to increase. You know, it seems uh, as much as we seem to be into heavier conversations about things or conversations about heavier things like vaccinations and, and masking, um, it, there are times when you have sort of an aha moment to say, we really do need to remind people to wash their hands and, and to, um, you know, stay home if you're sick. And I think in the past, maybe, maybe more people were thinking, you know, I, I can't, I have a, you know, a common cold. I can't stay home from work today. I think that's mm -hmm. going to be uh, what happens, whether um, we're, we're back to work full-time or part-time, but um, you know, and I, I think, when you, when you talk about property management, when you talk about operations of any kind of commercial real estate, you realize just the breadth that we get involved with, you know, the entire patient experience is we, what we're responsible for every day. Um, as it pertains to really on the, on the, on the hospital operation side, there's, there's always been a focus on scheduling and on trying to, um, you know, make, make the ability for someone to get care at a, a particular specialty uh, easier and more convenient, but now it's even more tightening the scheduling so that we don't end up with people, you know, more people populating common areas or waiting rooms, for example. That, that's an example of one thing that quickly seemed to accelerate. It was, it was in place, but there's a much heightened focus on, let's make sure that we're really focused on the technology to help us schedule so that we're not contributing to the problem by having folks sort of hanging in the lobby waiting for their appointment. Those are just okay. a few things that come to mind. Thank you, I appreciate that. Jay, what's the investment spin on that? You know, I think there's two points. You mentioned the expansion of facilities and, and we do see that was a trend prior to COVID where health systems were seeking to expand their ambulatory footprint, put sites of care within the communities, we see that trend continuing to be an important trend that health systems are focusing on uh, developing outpatient ambulatory care centers. Um, and one of the things that may have changed with respect to that is how they go about financing it. So we're seeing health systems prioritize their capital um, in ways that means in some cases not to spend their own dollars on building an outpatient medical office building, but to utilize outside capital um, and certainly now more than any time in the past, 
that capital from third parties is relatively cheaper than it has been. And while not the same cost as it would be for health systems to utilize their own dollars, that spread between the cost of capital has narrowed considerably. So we're seeing an acceleration in the trend to develop these facilities and use outside capital. And the other thing I would mention is just the capital flows. I mentioned it earlier. Um, we always see, or the sector, medical office building sectors has traditionally always seen an increase in capital flows into the sector when we have a downturn. And that's largely because they, the investors have seen that in the downturn, comparatively, this asset class has performed well relative to, their, uh, to the other asset classes. Um, and this one has been no different. And again, for a pandemic created recessionary environment to have capital flows flowing into the space, they're looking at things like the income security of the asset class, but they're looking mm -hmm. at rent collections that are near 100%, um, occupancy rates that are ticking up, rental rates that are increasing slightly. Compare these to other asset classes, we're really not seeing those in other asset classes. So this, this amount of capital that's in our space has certainly been, I think, accelerated. We're seeing a lot of new names and a lot of excitement. And I expect as this pandem pandemic leaves us at some point in time, that capital will remain in the sector. Terrific. Um, we started the conversation with headlines for 21. Let's end the conversation with the headline for 22. Jay, let's start with you. What's the outcome? Um, I would say medical office buildings outperform uh, peer asset classes in 2022. Um, this is largely many of the factors we talked about before in terms of rent collections, um, income security, health systems, really increasing their ambulatory footprints we're gonna see this asset class continue to grow. And by all means, this asset class will always be a niche asset class when you compare it to some of the larger asset classes, office, retail, hotel, multifamily. At the same point in time, it's growing in size, uh, it's growing in investor appeal, um, and its performance will continue to draw new investors into the space. Thank you, Mark. What do you see as uh, the outlook for 2022? Um, we just have to stay mindful of what's going on. We have to be the best partners with our healthcare systems that we can be. You know, one trend that I that I failed to mention earlier is, and, and you're reading these headlines everywhere, John. There, um, hospitals are requiring their staff to either vaccinate or show proof of recent test, and they're expecting, um, they're beginning to let us know that that's their expectation for us as well. We need to comply with those um, regulatory. Um, provisions where we have a contractual obligation to do so. To me, that's just another show of our, our partnership um, and, you know, and to do everything that we can to help. Um, I hope we're coming out of this in 22 and we can get back to what a, a 22 new normal. We, we thought we were in a 2021 new normal for most of this year and, and we were absolutely getting there. You know, some relaxed provisions while still maintaining a high level of, of care. Um, to be honest, to be frank, we were we were pretty fortunate in our asset class from a um, you know a safety program perspective that the CDC continues to recommend masking in healthcare facilities. So we really didn't have to to shift to sort of a hybrid version of that, or you know think about you know our signs in our buildings remain throughout 2021, regardless of whether you've been vaccinated. We need you to to mask up. So. Um, you know, selfishly, hopefully, the, as we prepare for 22, every conversation doesn't start with the word pandemic or the phrase COVID-19. Um, we can get back to doing some of the other things that, that we want to do. But I'm um, really proud of I'm uh, really proud of the, the operations folks in our sector um, who perform well, and and for all folks in property management throughout that have have managed through this. And you know, um, safety of our clients and, and their patients is at the forefront and it will continue to be. I've talked a lot about the investor interest in this asset type and a medical office building is a great asset for investment, but it's a great asset for investment when it's managed well and that the patients feel comfortable entering that medical office building and getting the care they need 
and the providers feel comfortable that they have their facility um, up to the, uh, up to the um, levels that they needed to in order to deliver that patient care effectively. Um, and so I applaud the, the management uh, groups within our industry because they're really making um, these medical office buildings great for the, for the patients, but also a great investment type for uh, investors. Yeah, I'll just, add, I'll just add to that. You know, we, we, we sometimes are um, not on the forefront. Um, very often, you know, where everyone just assumes things are clean and comfortable and the lights work and the elevators work and that sort of thing. We really have been on the front lines for the last 18 months. And uh, again, very proud of how our, our managers and all of our, all of our uh, allied partners, um, many of whom are BOMA members, many of whom we'll see in November and um, as we continue to educate and inform. But um, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been a ride and we're still on it and still very determined to keep people and, and property safe. Well, best of luck to the both of you. And again, I have to thank you so much for taking time from your schedules to, to sit with us. And thank you both. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Sure.